let's talk about the uh, the first work of art that we should we should look at, and this is the Chimera of Bellerophon, um, and it's an Etruscan bronze. So the Etruscans, we I don't even know if we've ever once mentioned the Etruscans on the podcast, which is sort of funny. Um, but they're these like precursor uh, pre- precursor uh, s- civilization to the Romans, uh, and the Romans sort of look at them that way, and they have uh, a really kind of rich artistic culture. And uh, Vasari makes mention of the fact that one of the things that's happening in Italy at this time is all of these big public works are going on. The, the Christian church is ordering the construction of, church, of you know, new churches and basilicas and so forth. And patronage is emerging. So even secular patrons are dedicating churches or, you know, having buildings built. Um, and as they're digging up the earth for the foundations, um, they're like stumbling on these treasures, these masterworks of, of Western art and Western history. Um, and this is one of the things that happens in uh, Arezzo, which is a, a, a Tuscan city. Um, they're making ditches and fortifications. So they're digging right into the ground and they stumble across this Etruscan chimera. Now, Bellerophon is the hero who rides Pegasus. So he's kind of well known in Greek uh, mythology. He's maybe one of the guys that you've sort of seen in pop culture. Um, but you maybe have not necessarily encountered the chimera, which is the, the beast he has to kill. Um, and it's this uh, tripartite beast. When we talk about chimeras now, we talk about like dreams, so something that's sort of fanciful or extravagant because the chimera itself is so crazy. Um, and and what it is, it's a, it's a tripartite uh, animal, heads of a lion, of a goat, and of a snake. So obviously kind of monstrous. And indeed, the, the original concept of a monstrum is this sort of shocking and uh, maybe perverse combination of different parts, right? Uh, or just something that's so out of the ordinary uh, that it, it must be a kind of monstrosity, right? Um, and so that's what the chimera is. It's this monster. And and we can see why Vasari picks it out because of the, uh, the elegance of its forms and the motion that's inherent in this work, right? And this is something that is going to become a theme as we move into the Dugento and the, the Trecento and ta- start talking about, you know, 13th and 14th century Italian art um, is motion. Right, the notion that you could portray somebody uh, kind of in action, uh, and this was something that the uh, Greek painters and sculptors really mastered. I mean, you look at the discus thrower, right? That's the big famous one. Um, and the kind of coil of his body as he's getting ready to throw the discus. Um, we think of these as just, well, of course, this is something that artists can do is they can capture a still frame or whatever. Um, but it takes amazing technical skill to be able to do that. And this chimera has the kind of uh, coiled haunches of a lion as it's getting ready to spring and it's kind of rearing its head back and roaring. Um, and you can kind of almost see the, the tail, uh, which is the snake, right? The snake is like thrashing as it has this sort of other head growing out of it, the goat head, just like, you know, pushing its way, uh, like as if it has just almost burst out of the skin, right? So the movement of it is incredible. And, you know, when Vasari says that this comes from nature, right? Uh, he can't possibly mean that somebody went out and was like, hmm, I'm going to find a chimera today. I mean, I guess he could mean that. He may have believed that these chimeras were around, but I, I think he's a much smarter guy than that. He's not saying like, I went out and I, he went, this guy went out and he painted these different things and just, you know, took the painting home and then made this, this sculpture. Um, what he is saying is that this is, uh, you know, the, the elements of this painting uh, are, are, you know, taken right out of life. And then they have added to them the uh, kind of essential and ineffable ingredient of the human imagination um, and imagination. The ancient philosophers were fond of saying that this is what imagination does. It takes you know, pieces from elsewhere and it combines them and puts them together. Um, and so this is kind of what you've got in this in this chimera. And it's beautifully illustrated by the fact that it's this imaginary beast, um, which has also been kind of given a certain coherence by the vision of the artist, right? That you can you can almost see exactly how it would move if there were such a thing. Um, so it's a stunning piece of art, and it tells you kind of what Vasari's ideal is, right? This is why he mentions it, is because he's he's got this idea um, of what we're traveling toward, and that is the meeting of technical skill with uh, human imagination, the human mind, the human ability uh, to see the spiritual realities of the world, things like emotion, right? And and as when we get to Christianity, salvation, right? These these things can be kind of imprinted upon the raw materials of earth and dust and matter. Um, and that's just what art is. It's just taking stuff, clay and dirt and paint and egg and oil, right? Um, and kind of mixing it around with that key sort of spiritual vision uh, so that it becomes something divine, something refined and beautiful.